Friends, welcome to worship. Uh, I am Pastor Melinda Stonebreaker, and on behalf of all of the congregation of the Greenfield United Methodist Church, I welcome you to worship in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the third Sunday of Advent, and uh, we are excited uh, to be expecting Jesus all this season long. These uh, weeks of Advent, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas, we have been talking about what it means to expect Jesus. So God is with us even now as we worship um, gathered in our separate places. We begin worship with some announcements, and I, I invite you to contact the church office be, uh, via email or uh, by phone. Uh, you can also contact me, and the, the phone number and email addresses are on your screen. Uh, you can also find out much of this information by looking at the church newsletter or the church website. And um, so I invite you to uh, consider your participation in each of these ministries um, that we will be announcing now. Uh, first is that on uh, Sunday evening from 5 to 6 p.m. on December 20th, so a week from today, uh, we will be having a Christmas drive through event uh, where people will, will come and be able to drive under uh, the awning and through the parking lot and see a live manger scene um, with some characters and animals. We'll have music and gift bags. Uh, and so it will be a delightful time during this season and it will be COVID friendly, of course. So mark your calendars for that next weekend. Also, we will be having a Christmas dinner again this year, only this year uh, we won't be eating together in the fellowship hall, but instead we'll be uh, drive through pickup or we can deliver it. You need to make reservations for this dinner by the 18th and you can make reservations either by contacting the office or contact Deb Blazik. Uh, both of these things, plus information about Christmas Eve is in the Christmas letter that you, uh, if you didn't receive it by Saturday in the mail, you should be receiving it in the next couple days. You can also go to our website, greenfieldumc.org and find the Christmas letter there. It has information about Christmas Eve service, which will be on Stewart Radio 107.9 at 6 p.m. So Christmas Eve, 6 p.m. on Stewart Radio, and that's 107.9. Um, you can also find it on our YouTube channel um, where this video is today, and we'll link it on Facebook as well. Uh, if you are interested, you can come and listen to it from your car in the church parking lot, and we'll plan that at the end of the service when Silent Night is being sung, uh, we will turn on the, the lights at the church and at the outside of the church and then ask cars to turn on their dome lights or their parking lights and turn as if we were passing the flame in the sanctuary. Um, and the same thing can be done from your home. You can go and turn on your porch lights um, and step outside and sing Silent Night and you can invite your, your neighbors to do the same. Um, there are many ways that you can participate in Christmas Eve, uh, even if it's in a different way um, and we're not all gathered together in the sanctuary. So again, look for that information as well as for information about Blue Christmas, um, which will be being done by mail this year. Um, look for that information in the Christmas letter. And there's a list of ways that you can participate there as well. You can also um, participate in different ways in worship today. I invite you to go to our website, uh, greenfieldumc.org, and click on this uh, red box that says worship check-in. And let us know that you are watching and share prayer concerns and announcements um, or other comments. Also, later today, after uh, worship, after this video concludes, we'll have virtual coffee hour, and there will be a link on our website that you can click and join that via Zoom. Also on Thursdays, I'm holding Advent prayers during Zoom. You can either check in over your lunch hour at noon to 1230 for some time of music and prayer, um, or join in the evening 6 to 630. The link for that is on our website um, on Thursdays. 
please join me in the call to worship. The Lord has done great things for us, and so we are glad. Our mouths are filled with laughter, and our tongues with shouts of joy. We're going to be lighting the Advent candles. And so before we do that, kids, I wanted to say hello. And I and Ron came today. Ron wants to say hello to everyone in hopes that, uh, that you're having a good Advent waiting for Jesus. Uh, this is a good time when we're going to light the Advent candles that uh, if you don't have your candles ready that you uh, Adults, you can go get your candles and get ready to light them. You could also get your Bibles because the text today is not going to be on the screen so we can see our readers better. So you could uh, get your Bible. Um, we'll also be taking offering later. So if you prefer to send a check, uh, you can get that right now too. But kids, I wanted to talk to you um, because Ron wanted me to tell a story that he had to share about joy because this Sunday is the Sunday in Advent when we talk about joy. And yes, yes, that one, yeah. So he has this story. He told me um, that earlier, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, he was after school and he was waiting to be picked up and all of his, his friends' parents um, had come to pick them up or they'd gone to daycare, um, they'd walk there. And his mom, it was your mom, right? Yeah, dad was busy that day. Um, mom was going to come and pick him up. And um, his friends kept getting picked up. And it was just left where he was left with his friend. What was her name? Honey? Oh, okay. So her name was Honey. That's, that's a cute name for a bear. Yeah, Honey Bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so little Honey Bear and Ron were the only two left at school. And Honey's bear mom... Um, Bear's mom had come also to uh, pick her up, but she was staying so that Honey could stay with Ron and they, they could wait. And Ron said that he was getting kind of nervous um, because his mom didn't usually forget to pick him up or wasn't usually late. And um, then the, the, the principal came and, and said that, that Ron's mom was on the way. Yeah, and so Ron, you said you felt kind of relieved, right? Yeah, yeah, he said he felt relieved that, relaxing, that his mom was on the way to get him. And didn't you say also that you started to feel kind of warm, that you inside, you knew that your mom was coming? Yeah. So then um, his mom, he, he looked down the road and he saw his, his mom's car was coming and he started to get excited and happy and his mom got there and she got out of the car and she gave him a big hug. And now Ron said that when we talk about joy, that what you felt was joy at being wrapped in your mom's hug, right? That your mom cared about you and she came to get you and you felt joy. And he said he even felt a little bit of joy when he just heard from the principal that his mom was on the way. And he also felt a little bit of joy that Honey Bear was staying with him so he wouldn't be alone. And I wanted to tell you that story because when Ron told me about it, I thought, you know what, that's kind of like the joy of Christmas, that we are waiting and waiting and we're, we're talking about Jesus coming and we know Jesus is going to come. And during some times we experience this big hug from Jesus not the same way that we would from our mom or dad or our sibling, but we feel a big hug of Jesus knowing how much God loves us. And that even in those times when we don't maybe feel that as much, we have a little joy though at knowing that it's coming, that God is always on the way. God is always actually with us and we're on the way to understanding that God's with us. And not only that, but we have people like, Ron had honey bear that are with us as we wait too. So you have friends and family and neighbors that wait with you and that are with you to remind you of Jesus. Well, we have these four uh, words during Advent. We have hope and love and joy and peace. 
And I started, um, many of you probably have gotten some little coloring sheets, and I started coloring Joy. I haven't finished it yet, but this would be a good time for you to get out your coloring sheets. And if you don't have these coloring sheets, you could just get a, a piece of paper and make a picture about what Joy means to you. It might be a big hug or um, a picture of some friends or family or a picture of Jesus. Um, all of those things are things that remind us of joy. So we are going to uh, now watch a video. And as we do that, we'll be saying thank you, God, for this Advent season, for this time while we wait for Christmas. And we remember that you are not only with us, but you are coming and always teaching us new things. And we do that with joy. the candles of hope and love and we had the candle of joy sometimes joy seems foolish it is it foolish to have joy when we are in rough times like now can we have joy during a pandemic we can because joy can't be contained not by circumstances, not by people, nor by creation. Listen to birds singing, watch a puppy chasing leaves, or a cat chasing her tail. A child playing peekaboo, or, or a guy painting his truck. Joy can't be contained. Whenever we are, uh, we can have joy. You can sit around, talking, laughing, and playing cribbage in the garage. Somebody accusing us all we do here is play cribbage? Must be. Gee, some people. <laughs> we would never do that unless we had a deck of cards, Sandy, a cribbage board, and a bunch of guys wanting to play cribbage. We would never do anything like that. And that, of course, everything's going to be social distancing, wearing a mask. I mean, we get joy wearing a mask that says, farm naked. <laughs> Can we even talk about joy without spawning a little? Reminds me of one of my favorite Christmas kills, Joy to the Lord, the Lord has come. Joy is a gift from God, shared with all creation. Joy is especially to be expressed by those who live in Christ. I am truly glad to have the joy of Jesus. Me too. Sometimes though it seems we, have, we lose our joy. King David did, his, his sin and circumstances crept in and hid his joy. So we ask God to restore his joy. So he asked God to restore his joy. Return the joy of, of your salvation to me, he said. When our joy seems dim, we can do the same. Return our joy, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We are expecting you with joy. So thank you to Jimmy and Wendell and uh, to the Eastside Chapel uh, over at at Jimmy's shop uh, for letting the Advent candle be lit there and um, recording that this week. I appreciate it. I invite us now to sing our Advent hymn together.
Let's pray. God, we confess that we, like David, also let the joy of our salvation become dimmed by our own sin and by our circumstances. So Lord, we ask you to forgive us and to restore the joy of our salvation. Today, as uh, we join together in spirit to worship you as a body of believers, as your body, even spread out among many locations. We are here to worship, and so we trust you to receive us, even as we expect you coming to us this Advent. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Our first scripture today is from Isaiah chapter 61, and Roberta Witzke, uh, one of the, the, our teachers in this uh, congregation, will be reading the words of Isaiah to us today. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. From chapter 61 of Isaiah, Joyful Proclamations. The Lord God's Spirit is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release for captives and liberation for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vindication for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for Zion's mourners, to give them a crown in place of ashes, oil of joy in place of mourning, a mantle of praise in place of discouragement. They will be called oaks of righteousness, planted by the Lord to glorify himself. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore formerly deserted places. They will renew ruined cities, places deserted in generations past. I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and dishonesty. I will faithfully give them their wage and make with them an enduring covenant. Their offspring will be known among the nations and their descendants among the peoples. All who see them will recognize that they are a people blessed by the Lord. I surely rejoice in the Lord. My heart is joyful because of my God because he has clothed me with clothes of victory, wrapped me in a robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom in a priestly crown, and like a bride adorned in jewelry. As the earth puts out its growth, and as a garden grows its seeds, so the Lord God will grow righteousness and praise before all the nations. This is the word of God for the people of God, Thanks be to God. From chapter Did you hear uh, that passage that said, what that Roberta just read, it said, my heart is joyful because of what the Lord has done. Uh, let's join together in our hymn, Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart.
Vernon, Dan, Lee, and Melody uh, for their work with the music this week. The second text that we will be reading today is Psalm 126. From chapter 61 of Isaiah, Joyful Proclamations. The Lord God's Spirit is upon me because the Lord has. One minute, this is the wrong scripture. From Psalm 126, a pilgrimage song. When the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like we had been dreaming. The, our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at that time among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us and we are overjoyed. Lord, change our circumstances for the better, like dry streams in the desert waste. Let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joyful shouts. Let those who go out crying and carrying their seed come home with joyful shouts carrying bales of grain. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the sermon today is from Psalm 126 that Roberta just read to us, and it's about joy and that we can expect Jesus with joy uh, because God has been faithful in the past and God will be faithful in the future and God is faithful right now. So uh, one of the TV shows that our family has enjoyed uh, watching in the past um, is called Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And it was fairly popular, so you may be familiar with it. It was on ABC originally, and now I think it's on HGTV. You might remember the host named Ty, and he was kind of a cool guy with cool hair, and he had a big heart and a really loud voice. And the show was just, it was made for TV. It was made for good ratings because it was fun to watch uh, with, the, with the whole family. And um, it always had a challenge because they were racing to get a house done, uh, remodeled in a week. And it always had a heartwarming story. So in each episode of the show, the people who were featured um, were uh, people who had their circumstances changed for the better uh, by the, the home remodel. And so the families that were recruited to be on the show were often families, or were, well, really they were always families who were way, way, way down on their luck. Uh, they were facing incredible hardships. And so they were in desperate need of a home remodel. And so the Extreme Makeover team would come in, they'd film the story of the family's hardship, and then they would send the family away for a week of vacation where they could uh, have some rest and relaxation. And then back at home, the, the team would come in and they would bring hundreds of community folks most of the time, often volunteers, in to redo the house uh, within a week's time so that these circumstances that the family had been living in would be made better and that their home would be suitable to their needs. So then at the end of the week, the family would return from vacation and there would be a big reveal. And so in between the house that had been remodeled and the family who was going to see it for the very first time, the uh, ex Dream Makeover Home Edition bus sat in the middle. And so the whole crowd of volunteers and family and crew and everyone would stand there and they would chant, move that bus, move that bus. And then the bus would drive away and the family would see for the first time their restored home. And so that camera would, would start by looking at the house and then would turn and look at the family as they are 
re reacting to their brand new house or their, their remodeled house. And so they saw their circumstances change for the better right on camera. And they responded almost always with just tears of joy. They often didn't have words to put to the, their joy, uh, but you could see it expressed on their face. Well, Psalm 126 starts with the same thing. It says, when the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was as if we had been dreaming. Because in Psalm 126, the psalmist is remembering that God had changed the circumstances of the Israelites for the better. The person who wrote this psalm is remembering that when that God had set the people free from captivity. And we haven't gotten to this point um, in the story that we've been reading together um, that we started in October, but we will eventually get to this point in the story later this winter um, where God's people, the Israelites, uh, get taken into captivity. And so from, from where we are, just as a, a preview, we stopped with the judges like Gideon and Samson um, and Deborah and others. We, we stopped with them and soon Israel will get a king and uh, one of the kings will be David. That's the, the line that Jesus comes from. And there will be a home city of Jerusalem where the temple of God will be built. And so later on, uh, as the, the story continues, we will see that God's people get conquered and the Babylonians come in and they destroy the temple and they take the people, many of them, away as slaves into exile in Babylon. And then those people live there for decades and for generations in captivity. Then eventually uh, Babylon's also overthrown and the Israelites are released from captivity and go back to Jerusalem, or many of them do. And so that's what this Psalm is remembering. The Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better. It was like we'd been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter and our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. You know, it wasn't just God's people who noticed their freedom. Uh, they noticed, obviously, they were shouting with joy. They were responding with these tears, similar to what a family would do when they see their home uh, restored for the first time. They were delighted. But it wasn't just them. It was others. Uh, the, Psalm 126 goes on to say, it was even said at that time, among the nations, many people, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, the Lord has done great things. So yes, God had done great things for the Israelites. And so the psalmist remembers that work, remembers the joy of the people, and then transitions to asking God to work in them again. Lord, change our circumstances for the better again. It says, like dry streams in the desert waste. So probably what the, the psalm is referring to is these dry streams that were in the southern region of Judah, so uh, down in the south. And it was an area that was um, a, a desert in, in a way. It didn't rain there very much, and so the stream bed would become dry. But then at times, rain would come, and it would uh, wash away a lot of things in its path, but then it would leave behind a soil that was fertile and hospitable for growth. So the rain would come in to this dry land and it would nourish and restore and revive. Uh, actually, in later years, uh, the people that lived there uh, built systems for storing water and for planting uh, vegetation that would hold the water better. And so in later years, it wasn't a desert at all. Um, just like we know that, that people who, who farm and do city planning um, find ways to make growth happen and to use the natural resources um, in responsible ways uh, to, so that people are nourished and are able to grow and thrive. And so the, the psalmist is asking, like, like you do with the, the streams that are dry and you add water, God, we're asking you again to water us, water your people, make us fertile and revived again, change our circumstances for the better. 
this phrase, uh, change our circumstances for the better, um, doesn't quite communicate uh, what the Hebrew, the original language, was trying to say. So change our circumstances for the better um, doesn't really equate to make us a better home, remodel our home, renovate our house, Ty. You know, it's not really saying that, nor does it really mean make our farmland more fertile um, or make it so it grows better. What the Hebrew here actually means, the actual words are saying, set the captive free, release the slaves. And this idea of being set free, of the captives being released, is a key idea in Advent, right? We hear this in our Advent music, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, right? We hear that, it means set Israel free. We heard it in the song this morning, O come, thou long expected Jesus, it goes on and says, from our fears and sins, release us, set us free. And so Psalm 126 is reminding us that when Jesus comes, when God comes with us, we are set free. So we say, God, change our circumstances for the better. Set us free from all the things in our lives that hold us captive. From the things that hold us back from living in right relationship with you and right relationship with each other. So friends, what are these things that hold you captive? What is it that's holding you back from a right relationship with God, a right relationship with each other? a right relationship even with yourself? What are your fears and your sins that you want to be released from? What are your troubles or your circumstances? And what are the troubles and the circumstances and the fears and sin of we all as a people together collectively? What are the things that this world needs to be released from? What is it that this church needs to be set free from? What is it that this community needs to let go of with God's help? This Advent, we have been talking about expecting Jesus. We talked about uh, the first week, what to expect while we're expecting Jesus. And then last week, I, I, we talked about why do we expect Jesus? And this week, I'm asking us to think about how do we expect Jesus? And I'm inviting us to expect Jesus with joy. Just like the psalmist did, we can have joy as we wait for Jesus. We can have joy as we wait for the one who will set us free from those things that are holding us back. Because we can remember the good things that God has done before, and we can expect God to do good things now and in the future. Because God is at work. God has not forgotten us. And just like the people of that southern dry region, we can ask God for rain to restore and revive, to release us and make us whole. We can also use structures like the people did to hold the water for dry times. You know, perhaps this is a dry time for you or for people in your community uh, or in your home. And maybe you need to tap into some of the reserves. Um, many great reserves of our faith are found in our scriptures, uh, or, or in the, the stories of our faith, you know, especially the Psalms, like this Psalm. But many of our reserves are also found in our own stories, the, the ways that God has been active with us in the past, both as a whole people and as individuals and as families. So think about your stories. What is it, how is it that God has been with you? 
remember those times with joy, just like the psalmist did. God is still at work. Think about the ways God's been faithful to our world and our community and our church. And remember those times with joy because God is still at work. Now, uh, I am certainly no Thai, and uh, this is certainly, uh, this video is not made for TV. Uh, but I do want to have us remember how God has been faithful and has been working through us as a church, even in this pandemic. Uh, the Ad Council helped me to make a list and um, because I know that, that at times when we're not meeting in person and we're not having uh, the big festivities and fellowship times and, and breakfasts and uh, Christmas pageants and all of these things, when many of those are not happening, it can feel like maybe the church isn't doing anything. But friends, I want you to know that your church is not closed. And in fact, we've talked about this, that the church can't be closed because the church is the people of God. We are living in Christ and empowered by the spirit and that can never be closed. So the church is always at work because God is at work in us and through us. So I want us to remember the things that God has done with us and through us and in us um, and to celebrate them with joy. Because as we hold on to the things that God has done and we remember, we are encouraged to be able to ask God to do it again, for God to continue to be with us. And as we hold that, we can expect it. And we can have joy because God always shows up. God is always with us and bringing us joy and doing ministry in our world through us. So let's uh, look at this uh, list that your ad council made. So even during the pandemic, God has worked in us and through us as a church. And here is a list of ways. We have provided weekly worship services. We've been sometimes in person and always in spirit and always online. Uh, we have provided and attended the graveside services and provided uh, bereavement care uh, for families and for members of our congregations. We have provided daily devotionals uh, through email and the upper room. We have had weekly readings of the story um, in October and November and will continue after Christmas. We've had drive-by events. You've had the drive-by goodbye to Schubert and hello to the Stonebreakers, had drive-through communion. You all have supported a new pastor, someone who's never done this before, um, and my family during a pandemic and when my family lives in two separate locations. You all have offered prayers for each other and for the church and the school and civic leaders. Your leaders have prayerfully and respectfully discussed how to do ministry during the pandemic, when to be in person and when to be online only. And we've done that in respectful and courageous ways. And I am really proud of your church. We've had uh, countless people and times that people have made calls and emails and visits among the members of this congregation and the community. We provided one-time assistance to people with critical needs of transportation and food. We have had a youth group meeting via Zoom. We have the lending closet. We've had house churches for fellowship and worship. We've had in-gathering kits and cash that have been collected. We do backpack buddies still, free clinic. We've had virtual coffee hour on Zoom and the food pantry continues to be a ministry that's vital in our community. We've had small groups that have met in person, um, including outside and meeting via Zoom as well. We've had the four Bs. We have hosted WIC. We've had our Advent prayers on Zoom. The Not Alone group has, has 
met. Uh, we've had uh, people that have provided care for our landscaping and our trees, who've done facility planning and upkeep. We have worked to celebrate Jan and to uh, walk with her as she transitioned into full-time minister, or sorry, full-time retirement, and that's an exciting thing, uh, ministering to her family. We have recruited and hired a new secretary and welcomed Dawn in the office. We've had the sock drive. We continue to have presence on Facebook and newsletters and YouTube. We hosted the in-gathering drive-through uh, for the Southwest Iowa churches. We had fields of faith continue, the planting, harvesting, and celebration and sale of that. Uh, we had VBS for kids uh, mailed out to them so they knew that God loves them and that we love them too. We've mailed Sunday school weekly activities to students. We've had Advent candles and activities for families and individuals uh, to celebrate this season. We have provided funds for a meal to support our local healthcare workers at the hospital. We were a site host for drive through flu clinics. Uh, we continue to have a prayer chain that uh, of people who pray for others who are experiencing stressful times in their lives. Uh, we have moved our, uh, allowed our committee structure to be flexible about whether to meet in person or on Zoom, depending on the situation and the guidelines in our community, so that the work has continued and we've been able to continue ministry in our community and sharing the love and word of God. We had bag tags for students and teachers to put onto their bags for school. We have um, Gathering for God group that's uh, adopting a family for Christmas to give gifts for a family in need. They're, they've also been doing an Advent study and they just finished a study from Matthew West about their identity in Christ. We continue to support the church through the givings of our tithes and offerings, um, including that the, the giving of this year is similar to 2018. It is a little less than last year, uh, but some of the overflow and carry forward from 2019 has helped us to be able to pay all of our expenses for 2020 and to continue to support the Iowa Conference Ministries by fully paying our apportionments again this year. We have honored the saints who died this year um, on All Saints Day. Uh, we began the process of, of understanding the findings from our CAT survey. We set ministry goals and we completed all the administrative requirements for the conference. Uh, we found new ways to get new people involved in ministry um, as we set the committees for 2021. We've had people help with recording music in advance and so that we can provide the better quality uh, online worship services. We have planned a COVID friendly uh, Christmas dinner. We secured a spot on the radio, on Stewart Radio for Christmas Eve at six o'clock on 107.9. The, the trees around and the shrubs have been wrapped with lights um, so that we will have a festive time here in this simple but fun drive through Christmas um, next Sunday evening. Folks, I know that many of you have laughed and cried together during these last several months. Um, sometimes, even though physically distant, you have shed tears for one another, you have thought of each other, you have prayed for each other. We have continued to work and to worship together, to trust God together. And this is just the list we came up with. There could be many more. I'm sure the list could go on and on because much of that is what we've done as a whole community. And we know that the church is God living in each of us. And I know that all of you have been active in ministry in the world in the particular ways that God has placed and gifted you. So friends, uh, no matter what, no matter what, even in a pandemic, God has been faithful and God will continue to work in us and through us. Thanks be to God. I invite us now to uh, respond with joy and to say that we are so glad of what Jesus has done. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me.
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, um, we will pray for the concerns of our people and our world. We invite Jesus to come be with us and hear our prayers. And of course, we know even without invitation that God is here, that Jesus hears our prayers. So let's pray. God, we thank you for your warm invitation to ask for the things that we need to speak with you and share our hearts. Teach us to do that more and more, we pray. Lord, today uh, we ask for your presence and your guidance to be with those who are getting new starts in life. We know that there are families among us uh, who are in periods of transition, and so we pray for them. We pray for all who are ill and who are recovering. Uh, there are many in our congregation who have been sick with COVID and are getting better. There are some in the hospital. God, we give thanks for the answered prayer of Dick's surgery going so well, and we continue to pray for him. We pray for all of those who are grieving, who have lost loved ones. There are countless people, many people across the, the world who have lost loved ones from COVID, and there are many who have lost loved ones from other situations and other illnesses, other circumstances. And it really doesn't uh, differentiate. Grief is sadness, no matter, and, and worry and fear. No matter how the death has come, we grieve and we need you and we need each other. God, we pray for all those who are isolated, who are feeling blue this Christmas. And we ask that um, you would use us uh, to share your light and share your joy. But also we ask for your Holy Spirit just to, um, in a miraculous way, remind them that they're not alone, that even though their family and their friends may be unable to visit or, or cannot come together, um, yet you are with them and they are loved, deeply loved. Remind them of that, Lord. We ask for safety for those who travel. Uh, we think especially of those who are the distributors of goods and um, particularly right now, those distributing vaccine. We, we pray for, for safety for all who are on the road. We pray for our healthcare workers and the first responders. And this week especially, we pray for our educators and for the students who are are finishing these days before break. Uh, give them the endurance to, to get through the end here and um, allow them some space to rest 
over break and to recover. May they know how loved and needed and appreciated they are and help us to express that appreciation to them. And so, Lord, we do ask that you would be with each person who shines your light, with each person who carries your joy, cause us to go out with boldness into the darkness of the world and spread your light and your joy and your love and your hope as we wait for you and expect you to come we know that you'll be here in new ways teaching us new things we pray these things in the name of jesus the one who taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Another way that we respond to the word of God and uh, to the, the hope and, and the love of God that we respond with joy as we joyfully give um, back our gifts to God. And so I invite you um, to either go to our website, greenfieldumc.org, and click on the blue Give Now button, or uh, mail um, your offering to PO Box 92 in Greenfield. Um, all of the ministries of the church are supported by your giving, and it's a way that we are able to share God's love to create a healthy community. Uh, that's what our vision is here. And um, so I would like us to pray a prayer of dedication over these gifts. God, uh, you have so generously uh, gifted us. You have been with us and in so many ways have changed our circumstances for the better. In so many ways, you have set us free. And one of the ways uh, that we've been set free as your followers is to be able to release our hands around all of the things that we hold and to realize that we have been gifted them and then be able to give them back. And so as we give back uh, some of the money that we have received from your hand, we ask that you would bless it. Also bless all of the things that we give back in our work um, and in our prayers, um, in all the ways that we serve and live and love, all these things that we do to give back to you and to your world, we ask your blessing upon them. Use them for good in ways uh, that are even beyond our imagination, and we will give you all the glory and praise. Amen. to receive this benediction. This is from 1 Thessalonians. And um, I also, before I, I bless you and send you on your way, uh, invite you to share this video with others. It's a way of inviting them to church and sharing joy with them. Also, invite people uh, to listen to worship on Christmas Eve and to come to the Christmas drive through Let people who need a Christmas dinner know that we're offering that. Um, and those who may uh, need to worship um, in a quieter way uh, with acknowledgement of loss and sadness, 
let them know about Blue Christmas. Um, and if you have any questions about any of those things, please be in touch with me or the office uh, or look at our websites or your Christmas letter. So receive now this benediction, these good words from the Apostle Paul. He says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't suppress the spirit. Don't brush off spirit-inspired messages. But examine everything carefully and hold on to what is good. Avoid every kind of evil. And now, may the God of peace himself cause you to be completely dedicated to him. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept intact and blameless at our Lord Jesus Christ's coming. The one who has called you is faithful and will do this. And all God's people said, amen. Our song of sending uh, each Sunday uh, during Advent has been soon and very soon. And it's getting soon and even sooner uh, because we have only one Sunday of Advent left. So God bless you as you go this week. Uh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Go in peace and love and joy with Jesus. Amen.